Welcome back to this week's Overworked Admin episode. Uh, this will be our sixth episode of our PowerShell series, uh, six out of 14. Uh, we've had a short break. I hope everybody enjoyed their holidays. It is the middle of January and I took some time off. This uh, week, we're gonna cover a couple of different things. Uh, we're gonna cover the clear option, uh, which oddly enough, keeps your screen clear. It's a pretty easy concept. And we're gonna get into if statements. And we're gonna work with some of the commands and some of the things that we've been discussing in our previous uh, videos uh, and see how we can start using um, logical operators and things like that in order to make our scripts do what we would like them to do. So um, if you remember, in, in previous episodes, we talked about things like git process, right? And, and if we execute this git process command, we get a bunch of different options. Well, as we're running you know, our scripts multiple times, you know, our screen can get cluttered up. And this is just a best practice of mine. What I like to do before I have any of my screens, uh, scripts run that could produce output to the screen is I like to clear off all of the kind of garbage from you know, the previous uh, iteration of my scripts that ran. So as you can see um, before where without the script, um, without the clear line, I'll just clear this out. We have this one iteration of git process that I'm scrolling through. And if we run it again, we'll have you know, two iterations of git process and, and so on and so forth. As you can see, our, our screen can get a little messy here. So just as the personal thing for me, um, this is anything fancy, but I just like to put the clear command before any of the other uh, commands that I may execute that will hit the screen. It just keeps my screen a bit more tidy when I'm, I'm running my scripts and I find it a little bit easier to work with. So hopefully that'll help you out. Again, not anything too fancy there, but uh, just something that may help you. Uh, what we really wanna cover uh, today is the if operator. <clears throat> and um, the if operator is something that we generally use uh, in our day-to-day -day lives a lot, but we don't think about it, right? If we're hungry, eat a sandwich. If we're tired, go to bed. Um, if we've spent too much time sitting in front of the computer, go to the gym. Uh, or maybe it's if you're motivated, go to the gym. Um, so what we wanna do is we wanna start seeing how we can use this if command to make our scripts actually have a little bit of, of meaning. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do uh, git service and we, uh, we talked about this command previously, right? So we execute git service and it'll show all of the services that are running on our machine. And this happens to be a, a virtual machine that I'm running. So, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this git service and then we're gonna use the, the where operator that we, we spoke about. And if you remember, this little, these little symbols are a way to iterate through all of the objects in our collection. So this where operator will iterate through and it'll look for, let's look for the name property. And we're gonna set the name property. Let's say we want to find, um, I have this process called snare, which is a, a syslog process, and it's, but it's easy to type out. So let's do get service where name equals snare. So this is pretty straightforward, right? This is not, there's no real logic in this. We're just saying where there's a process named snare, just show me that. Now, what do we wanna do? Um, essentially, when we're working with processes and, and things like that, um, we, we wanna be able to take action based on the state or condition of a process or a service. So um, in, in the, the blog post, we use the spooler. And if you remember, we went through and we were talking about the write host command. So let's kind of review that just for a moment. If I can spell, um, do write host. So let's do write host. Um, and let's do this. Let's get this object and let's put it in a variable, right? So we'll use some of these concepts that we spoke about. And to do a variable, let's do service to check. And so let's say we want to write out service to check. And remember, because PowerShell is an object-oriented language, how we're gonna access these properties are through the, the object and then the dot property. So we'll do name. 
And let's just, we'll see that. Let's see just what that prints out. Oh, get service. Unexpected token. Oh, we have to set our um, expression equal to our uh, variable. That would help. So, snare. That's what we've got. And, you know, it, it cleared that other garbage off of our screen, the error, because, again, the clear command, um, this is not really intentionally there, but it's what it does for you, and it's very nice. So let's try a couple of other things, right? Post. Let's do, and I'm just going to copy and paste this so it's a little easier. My fat finger less. And let's do display name. And let's do write host status. So what we should get now is three different lines. And that's what we got. We've got snare is the, the name, snare is the display name, and it is running. Uh, and we could use something else like our print spooler or something like that. We could change it because this has the spooler. So spooler, so if that's this is the print spooler. And there you go. So you can see that name and display name are actually different in this particular case. So now that we know that this thing has a service, it is running, what do we want to do with it, right? It's just, this is actually a fairly important concept. Um, you know, we want to be able to take an action, let's say, if a service is or is not running. So let's say you know that... Um, you want to make sure that your print spooler service is running on your print server. So what you may want to do is you might want to come and use the if statement. And the if statement is exactly what it sounds like. And we're going to make this kind of little empty code block here. And it just starts off with the if and then these two little uh, parentheses, I guess. No, these are not parentheses. Um, I don't know what they are. You're above your nine and your zero. Somebody help me out here in, in YouTube land. Tell me what these things are. And then you have your curly braces here, your opening and closing curly braces. So this should look fairly familiar to you if you are used to like C sharp or C++. Um, parentheses? Maybe they are parentheses. This is going to bother me now. Um, and so what we want to do is we want to check the status of this spooler service. And then we want to do something based on the condition of that status. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take, let's just use this, we'll copy and paste this. We've got this variable here, right? We, we wanna work with variables. So we're gonna say if this service, if the status is equal to, and let's, what are we looking for here? Let's, let's check to make sure it's running, right? So if it's equal to running, then let's do this write host command and say I am running. So what should we get here? Think about it. Um, we have a couple of options that are going to display to the screen. It's going to check to see what the status is. And if it's running, it will print out. And there we go. So since the service is running, we will um, print this out. Now, what were to happen if we go into our services here? Open this up. And let's find our spooler service. There's our spooler service here. Oh, it's probably under print spooler. So let's stop this service. And let's try, try running this again. So we got no, I'm running, right? So what what else can we do? Like how, how can we display this information? Well, if you have an if, you can have an else. So let's try this out. And all this else block will do is it will catch, if it's not running, it will just display something else. So now that we have this, let's run it again. So not running. And if we start the spooler service, start it up again. I am running. So this is the first way that we're actually using kind of these logical operators, um, if I'm using that term correct, um, using these logical operators in order to take a look at the status of something on our system and then force different types of output 
depending on the conditions that we're checking for. In this type of logic, this is really what all programming is based on. So if you understand how these if-else statements and how some of the other mechanisms that we're going to go through in these PowerShell lessons work, you'll really get a good understanding for programming in general because really scripting is just a primitive form of programming. Anyway, I hope that you've enjoyed the video. Um, we will have our, our videos now on our same weekly schedule. Next week will be lesson seven, obviously. If you do appreciate the videos, please do subscribe. Um, check us out and uh, check out the ads that our sponsors have in the video. It's how we uh, keep the site running. Have a great day and uh, don't forget to join us next week.